What's really exciting is when we come up here with actually adults and children both, the first word you hear is, wow! So here we are at Westmore Wind Farm on the Oxfordshire Wiltshire border. I farm here, this is our crop of barley at the back here, golden blowing brightly in the breeze. So I'm called Liz, this is Sue. Well, I'm sort of inevitably involved with the wind farm because my partner is Adam Twine and he set it up. It was crucial from our point of view that it should be a community-owned wind farm. In the crop, there are 2,500 people who invested into the wind farm. It's not owned by me, the wind turbine, it's not owned by a large company, but by local people. It's the bit about the wind farm which is the most exciting bit to me. Every year we have an open day so people can come and learn about the turbines. So we're here today because we invested in these wind turbines about four years ago and it's really nice to see them working and today we've had the opportunity to go inside them and see them very close at hand. I've seen them in the distance but I've never sort of wandered round one or been quite as close. Open days are, are crucial because there is so much unthinking resistance to wind farms. We get people here and the first thing they say is, they're not as noisy as I thought they were going to be. Everyone says that to me. I thought people said they were noisy, but I mean, it's just incredibly quiet. I think when they see them, they're so majestic, they're like sculpture. And I think it, hopefully it's reassured a lot more people. The wind farm generates about 12 gigawatt hours a year, which is equates to an income of about a million pounds a year. And that goes back to help pay for the, the wind farm, which cost about eight million originally, so it's about an eight year payback. Westmill has two and a half thousand shareholders. They put in between 250 quid or 20,000 pounds each, average was 2,000 pounds investment. And they would hope to get a return of 16%. That's what we had in our share offer. And at the moment, we're on, on track for doing that. So. You just follow me around to over here. WESET stands for West Mills Sustainable Energy Trust, and we're a charity that was set up uh, immediately that the co-op was formed, really. And the idea is that all our shareholders have agreed that we can take 0.5% of the income each year in order to dedicate it to encourage sustainability in our local area. And what that looks like is that we run a lot of education projects. I think it's really good for the children to come and see what's around, see that they can get other forms of energy without draining too many resources. Now, who wants to have a guess at how many houses each turbine can power? Yes. 60. Higher, Ooh, a lot higher. higher. Each one of these turbines powers 500 houses which is 2,500 total. Solar group, if you want to gather around here. We've got this fantastic team of student environmental educators who we've been working with in the local secondary school. It's called an anemometer. Have any of you heard of one before? It's a sort of cascaded learning. Peter, that one's one that's got metres per second. No, wait, I'm just showing Look, them. Look, no, swap them around. So, so what's around. really exciting about that, from our point of view, is to see young people taking ownership of the place. Uh, we already have a sense of... Uh, uh, that, that some people feel these are their wind turbines. I just had a, a young girl come up to me just now and saying, that's the turbine my school named. Then there's a whole other stream which is really developing now, which is looking to see how we can offer possibilities in the local community in terms of what they might do about their building. This is our local village hall and we've just paid for insulation here. It's, it's 300 square metres of loft insulation. So this has all been done through money we've generated through the wind turbines, Ryan Weset. The plan is that we'll use this for, as a base for sustainable energy surgeries and we'll offer advice to uh, local people and how they can save money through different sustainable energy solutions. These wind turbines arrived just three years ago. I felt it's a bit like the hunting issue in rural communities. It just divides people. It's, uh, it's a challenge. <laughs> It took a long time to get them up here. We were, uh, I think, 12 years in planning, nearly. You don't get any without upsetting people. 
the day they first started putting up the turbine. We were just beside ourselves with excitement. I mean, it's, it's a complete roller coaster from the start to finish, and at, at any one time it might not have happened. I think the things that we learn are always communicate, always be honest, never misrepresent, just say it how it is and keep saying it how it is and be prepared for a long haul. It's investing in the community and investing in the future. Being able to watch TV go on the computers just by using the wind, I just think that's a really good idea. I feel very proud and the reason I do feel proud is because I have helped create that, I own a bit of that. These turbines are like five hearts beating in our community, producing power for us all.